Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. This week, while I'll be enjoying the final day of Expona 2024, when this episode initially drops, I wanted to share something particularly remarkable with you. As mentioned in episode 166, on Easter morning, I left for a three-day visit to Montreal, Canada, where I got to spend time with Louis Desjardins of Kronos Audio, experiencing not one, but two remarkable new products. My exposure to the groundbreaking and influential work of Kronos Audio founder Louis Desjardins began over a dozen years ago when I experienced the audition of his original patented game-changing two-platter counter-rotating Kronos Pro Limited Edition turntable in Vladimir Lamb's suite on the 35th floor of the Venetian during the 45th Annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January of 2012. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but this would launch my inevitable immersion into the Kronos universe. My next step further into this amazingly dimensional world would be with the arrival of the Kronos Sparta, a second, more affordable platform utilizing the incomparably effective contra-rotational dual platter scheme. It came into my room for review in the spring of 2015. Along with its optional Sparta supercapacitor power supply, it took up residency as my reference turntable for over six years. I was honored to be invited to report on the launch of the sui generis Kronos Discovery Turntable in August of 2021, a product that, as much as the Pro had done in 2012, again redefined and reset the previous expectations and limitations for what could be accomplished in advancing the art and science of LP playback. For the first time in my experience, certain distortions we had all attributed to and simply had assumed were part of the inherent reality of the LP playback, in particular, Groove Rush, were pushed so low in level as to be indistinguishable. And I was not alone in recognizing this inspired table's accomplishments. In no time, its previously unrealized level of performance was recognized by other established audio journalists, both in the UK and in North America. Discovery was, and was pronounced to be, the new benchmark. In September of 2021, I traded in my Sparta and took advantage of the opportunity to move up to the Kronos Pro LE. Again, with the optional supercapacitor power supply one. Then in March of 2022, during another trip to Kronos, I was witness to the game-changing performance of the Kronos Discovery and Chronoscope resonance suppression tone arms. The installation of the Discovery RS tone arm brought the experience of radically diminished groove rush to my Pro LE in a manner very close to what I had first experienced with the Discovery platform some year and a half earlier. You can only begin to imagine what it delivered when installed on the Discovery turntable. During my Montreal visit over Easter weekend and into the first days of April, I was privileged and honored to be the first journalist to experience the two newest products from Kronos, the Perpetual Turntable and the Discovery Phono Stage. Here is the conversation I had in the Kronos factory while in Montreal with Louis Desjardins and North American Kronos distributor, Bill Parrish of GTT Audio. Have a listen. Welcome everybody. We are here in Montreal with, uh, we're in the Kronos factory in Montreal, Canada. We've got Bill Parrish of GTT Audio and of Hello. course, Louis Desjardins from the Kronos world. Um, and we're here 
don't know if you can see this in the background. There'll be plenty of inserts for you to see with, with close-ups and video of this remarkable new product. Um, let's start with the Perpetual Turntable. This table's been, what, about since everything you learned building Discovery. But yet, I think the, the goal was to take that kind of an attention to detail and capability and make it a little maybe more compact. More importantly, to keep as much of that kind of sound as you could and to keep the price more affordable. This is roughly, what, 50, 60% of the price of Discovery. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. It's 60% uh, of the price. And uh, the, the, the work that we've uh, done, Discovery, I think uh, a lot of people agreed, established a new, a new bar a new bar in analog reproduction. But for a lot of our owners to upgrade from a pro to a discovery was a bit of a quite a step. A, a, quite yeah, a step. A yeah. Yeah. And 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 so the goal is not to come up with the next most expensive mouse trap right. out there, but to tr try to bring the technology into the hands of more people. Yeah. I mean we've been very successful with Discovery. Yeah, absolutely. But my next goal was to was to bring this uh, a little bit uh, to, to be more accessible yeah. to 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 people to have our technology, a little bit the same um, uh, the same uh, pathway that we had initially with the pro, and then we made the Sparta, which right. was a rationalization of the pro. Well, and it was an attempt to bring your technology to a more affordable price, so that more people could experience. And Bill, in two thousand fifteen. You dragged one of those Spartas to my house oh, and yeah. set it up. Is that when it was? Yeah, you met, yeah, you met my nine dogs. Nine years ago. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah, because I had uh, I still hadn't moved to the new house. Well, that's one thing I was going to say is that the perpetual also is not just to develop a new turntable. No, no, no. But there was a need because Pro, which is about, what, 12, 13 years? 13 well, years. Yeah. 13 yeah. years now. It's finished. Yeah. It was a limited production. It was a limited production, limited 250 production, units. 250 units. And it was and finished, I have one. <laughs> and there's the Sparta, and then there's the Discovery, and we there's a huge there was a gap, a huge gap. Yeah, there was there. a big gap. So from, you know yeah. we're filling the gap, but it's those 13 years of learning everything and and taking yeah. a ton of what you learned in the With Discovery, Discovery. Yeah. and bringing it here at a price point that. And I, I guys, I, I I can't dwell on this enough. The the attention to detail and the learning that this guy pulled off with Discovery. How much of that has been folded into this more affordable table? I'm, I'm not taking away anything from Discovery because no, it's still no. a freaking benchmark well, that has been yet to David be met. David Robinson have said uh, sui genuis. Yeah, so, it's absolutely yeah. a sui genuis. I mean, there's nothing like it. This thing, would you, would you be upset if I said this brings the majority of that level of performance for roughly 60% of the price? That's the truth. It's not the same, but no. it's... Most people may not what is it, find the difference in price yeah. to be that worth the jump going almost twice as much to get a little bit better performance because it is the best table I've ever heard. But God, this is so close. Ed, yes, and this is a this is a thing I'm very happy about, proud about, excited about sharing with people is that at 60% of retail, this turntable is achieving 90, 95% of the I'm glad you of, said it. I yeah. hate, I hate I, to put I, those I started, numbers on I things. I started saying it, yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Now, uh, Discovery has the option of putting two tone arms on. Right. Yeah. And so there's a certain width to it and a certain uh, size to it. This turntable, uh, one difference is that it, it, it only um, uh, accommodates uh, one arm. One arm. Uh, a second arm could always be kind of put in, but I, I, I'm not sure it's necessary. But yeah. uh, regardless, it's it's only an inch wider than the, the Pro. Pro. Yeah. So in order to get and a yet, more... And yet you're able to keep the platter centered. That's right. Yeah. 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 That was... Which yeah. is aesthetically pleasing. It is. Yeah. 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 Which I think is also a, an improvement sound. I, I was going to well, say, I, I suspect so because that of, symmetry yeah, and dynamism yeah. is... A little more yeah yeah i agree now as much as i love the table and visually you've seen the pictures under the video here so this thing's freaking beautiful um but the thing that has knocked as much as i love the table what knocked me out from the first needle drop you played for me oh, you son of my. <laughs> um the new phono stage the discovery phono stage is 
what, seven or eight years worth of, I mean, you started developing a photo stage with your Greek company, 2017 Which to True Life Audio, True Life which Audio. we partner with. Right. Yes. And this was 2017 or so. So we've got seven, eight years to, and, and the whole idea was to hit what you call the complete analog solution. To have everything that Kronos can do to make this the best possible LP experience on the planet. Um, I think you've done that. But I want to make a point to say I've heard a few phono stages. Uh, two and a half, three years ago, I selected what was my what I thought was the best phono stage in the entire decade I'd heard. Now, I've only had, what, eight hours, nine hours of listening to this new one. Um, but I've heard it, your system before. And I got to tell you, um, this may be the most significant phono stage that I've ever heard. I mean, the differences, the, the first things, you remember, the first things I said to you were that the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, transient speed, and I don't just mean rise times, I mean decay on symbol trails and things. The transient speed, I've never heard anything yet that, that can touch what this is doing. And its ability to, to present the bloom and body and the space, especially down deep, the pitch definition down into... Oh, the resolution. Well, oh, yeah, but goodness. I'm talking yeah. down into the yeah. subsonic yeah. Yeah. area is beyond anything else I've heard. Well, you said it last night on your Facebook post, and we talked about it yesterday when listening. This is a generational product. Yeah, this is a once this, in a decade this product. Is what, as yeah. was... The pro, as was Discovery, yeah. this yeah. bastard's done it three times yeah. in yeah. 10 years. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really, it's crazy. It, it, look, it, it's, it's, it's when you get a product that redefines the category. The category. And I, look, and I, one of the things that's unique about this, because it is a tube-based product, which we all agree, I think we would all tend to agree, um, modern tube technology has the correct amount of bloom and body and, and that kind of thing. Older tubes may have been a little syrupy, a little maybe euphonic sounding. This is not the case with this. But what I think, I suspect anyway, from what you've we've talked about and what I've seen, the fact that this particular phono stage is suspended, completely isolated from the rest of the environment. I mean, this guy even designed the material in the suspension O-rings. Um, yeah. I, I, I want you to understand, there's, there's a fanatic degree of development in this table this isn't just like oh this looks pretty this is like how does uh, it didn't sound good now we're going to do this and i mean this the table's been what about three years in development yeah roughly three years yeah. yeah and it's staggering accomplishment but the photo stage you guys you've been advancing your photo stage since the first uh, first time i heard it i think was 2018 yeah. in munich was the first photo stage i heard okay which was except it was excellent but yeah and you've this heard is, it at my place many I, times yeah, yeah. yeah but this guys this may be I think this is going to set a lot of people on their ear. I oh, think yeah. this is going to be this personally. Is game this this is the phono stage to try to catch up to. The experience is more holistic. You're you're in a performance. Yeah. Okay. Now I know I've said things like that before, and I meant it then too. But this is such a transition, Louis. I don't know, dude. I look. I, I hate coming to see you because you ruin me every time I come up here. <laughs> I don't hate coming to see you, but you get my point. I mean, it, this is, you, you have to be, I mean, first of all, I can't imagine how much, how much work this has been, but. A, a huge amount of work. But so, but so we, you, you mentioned a complete analog solution. Yeah. And I just want to do a little bit of a, of an explanation as yeah, to yeah. what that is and why we, we decided to do it. In turntables in general, there's always been the idea that you can buy a turntable, you can buy a tone arm, you can buy a phono stage, and you put this together, and somehow it's going to give you the sound that you were looking at, and you can get the right combination of yeah. yin and yang, and, and it's going to be... But this is a lot of trial and error, and chances are it's not going to give you the whole sound. Sure. So, so uh, my idea was that we had we had a, a turntable. We had we used to have the tone arm, which was the Black Beauty, the Andre Terrio tone arm. And uh, I, I, I going from show to show, I, the performance would be variable depending on which phono stage sure. uh, 
we were paired with right. or and a Defono Sage is the most difficult piece of electronic to do in electronics because it has the most amount of gain. Right. Uh, okay. 66 dB gain translates to uh, because every time you add 3 dB, you double the sound. It adds up to two to the, the power, power 22. Holy shit. Okay. So it's like a one to a million yeah. linear amplification. Okay. No amplifier is required to do this, though it does less, but with higher current, of right. course. And phono stages have maybe a maximum of 12 dB of gain, which is 2 to the power of 4. Okay. Okay. But 2 to the power 22 is huge, where little noises, little issues enormously become, expanded. yeah, it's a microscope, basically. Yeah. So, so the, the idea is uh, I met uh, Belisarios Georgiakis who was the founder of True Life Audio, and they had a phono stage that I liked, but we went through extensive development to bring it to the to the very high level. It was a, a, amongst the best phono stages available. But over time, we we reworked transformers in the power supply. We reworked- and, and just to go off topic just a bit, I mean, one of the things TLA is known for, they've been building transformers since the 1920s. They, they designed them for industry for commerce for military applications for radio applications these are some serious ass transformers to start with well they are and most importantly they're custom built for the need for the need yeah. and the bandwidth we're looking for there's a lot of phase issues that happen right from the transformer stage and if you if you don't if you haven't solved this at that stage you want you can't overcome you can't it later. fix it later yeah. so yeah. So this is the foundation. So we've we've done a lot of improvements over the original phono. I mean, in, in my house, we had a stable production. But in my house, I had always like new things. It was always tweaked when I and, come up. And then the idea. Well, lab. Yeah. Yeah. Then the idea was to go to the to the to a new rectifier tube that has a much uh, much more reserve of power, much more a uh, much faster delivery, much wider bandwidth. And 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 once that was completed, uh, we were thinking of making this uh, an upgrade to the ex existing phono. But I thought, no, let's go to the yeah. next step. Yeah. And the next step is is the signal stage, uh, which is just unbelievable. Using uh, different kind of tubes that we were using in the past. Uh, well, you showed me some of the no NOS tubes you're using for this. Yeah, um, so we're we're using 6350s uh, as the output tubes on this, which are were developed for computer applications uh, before transistor solid state was used. And these tubes are extremely neutral, extremely have a very open sound or very fast, and um, they're they're they've got a very very long life. Uh, life yeah. because uh, in computers they had a lot of these tubes and to you know so they they're rated like for 10 15 thousand hours yeah. i mean the quality and no microphonics these tubes are just unbelievable yeah. so anyway so well, and it's it's dual separate power supplies they're that's it's a right true true isolated uh dual mono supplies well we had that in the first yeah, one but, but we, we had a, it in one case yeah. we had two acns we had two power right. switches but we had to do Two different chassis on this because uh, the, the the we have we have more transformers than we had we have a separate transformer for the low signal and so that and the the the, the, the bigger uh, tubes so we couldn't fit it in one box uh, in 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 now in having in two boxes we can fit uh, both boxes side by side in the discovery rack uh, but if somebody had a, a more narrow rack they could put the, the boxes on two different shelves. Sure. If you have only one box, then you're limited uh, yeah, yeah. because it's about what 23 inch wide okay. total. So this is this is wider than the normal 19 and 5 eighths. And, and by the way, the 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 entire solution includes the rack that this is built on. With its, you, if you saw oh. the way shelves are isolated, I mean the technology applied. This guy doesn't stop anywhere. He keeps going. This is all going to launch at Munich, and I am Munich. Right? That's right. So we'll be shooting a video there of the of the initial launch. I uh, hope you'll watch for that. Um, and you can go back and look. We talked. I mean, the, the resonance suppression tone arms were another one of those. Oh my God, it's changing yeah. everything. Um, and yeah. when you stack all this stuff together, it is 
amazing the amount of performance. You know, I look, I, I had thought we had probably reached certain pinnacles. And I mean, you had even said, eh, I don't know. Um, but, you know, I thought Discovery was going to be the end of it. And then you, you come out with this, which is not quite Discovery, but it's almost half, it's just a little more than half the price. And then this photo stage. And then the photo stage. This photo stage. The photo stage I really think this is going to shake up a lot of people. So, so th that's a very good point you're bringing up. And let's talk about the name of the turntable, which yeah. is perpetual. Yeah. And in perpetual, we don't mean perpetual motion, no. like motion that doesn't require any more energy to continue, but it, we use it in the sense of perpetuity. Yeah. So uh, I've, on the last Asian tour I was on, I told all the journalists, and I'm, I'm telling it to people here as well, there will never be a bigger turntable than the Discovery. Than Discovery. This is the, th this is the end of the, the journey. Sure. And this is important because a lot of people are buying equipment today that are $200,000, $300,000 to find out two, three years later that there's something supposedly better that makes what they bought obsolete that now costs $800,000. Now, I understand that we make expensive products. I'm not, we're not. You know, it, it costs what it costs to right. make good high-end products. Of course. But in terms of the advancement in the turntable realm, I think that we've reached a point of maturity. Sure. And 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 what I'm excited about here is that, yes, this new phono is more expensive by about 60% than the old phono. But when you put the new turntable together with the new phono together as a complete analog solution, we're going maybe twice as good in sound reproduction as we had with the Discovery and, and the, the old original phono. phono stage. Yeah. So, Which is still about the same money either way, yes? That's so right. So the Discovery and the old phono stage versus Perpetual and the new phono stage, it's about the same investment. That's right. But this clearly is a step oh, up. Yeah. As good as Discovery, of course, and Discovery this, with and Discovery. This, and yeah, this, Discovery, with yeah, Discovery with Discovery. Discovery with Discovery. Yeah, it's a whole yeah. other yeah. realm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But, yeah. So that doesn't mean that a person who has a discovery turntable, uh, you know, would have to change his sure. turntable. No, it doesn't. No. It, it changes that, that, his stage. Just yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, but but what's exciting is as a complete yeah. budget for the same amount of money, you have a huge advance yeah. in performance, and that to me is more exciting exciting well, than to make a four hundred thousand. Well, it's certainly more table. responsible. Sure. I think. I think one of the things that, that I would characterize about this new gear is the value that it represents. Because look, nobody's saying 70000 for a photo stage is cheap, but in terms of performing, you can spend more. You can spend eighty, hundred. dollars Well, some of our competitors are coming up with $90,000 phonos, $120,000 yeah. phonos. Yeah. And, and price <laughs> is not always indicative, uh, of, indicative performance. of performance. And I want to make a point that I see... Not only the exceptional quality here, but I see it as somebody who's been responsible enough to try to bring it to a value as well. well yeah, you could be expensive and still offer a great value. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's that's what Chronos does. I, I mean, Chronos since is the beginning, a, dude. The pro. Every single product that he's ever released has been a huge value at its price. Point. I think so too. And when it hasn't been, in the case of, let's say, the Andre Terrio arm, uh, in terms of time-wise, it wasn't a bad value well, when we were offering it. Well, the best but, that we knew at the time. Uh, at yeah. the time, but when we could see do something better, we gave an incredible trade-in value That's for our true. customers. That's true. Oh, my God. That's true. Where our customers have not lost their initial yeah. investment. Which we thought was going to end, and it's still going on. <laughs> but, but, I, but what? You've got... 250 uh, traded in arms? That's right. He's got I a mean, box back there. He's got, got three boxes back there. Yeah, three yeah. boxes yeah. back there. Guys, um, More in, than, in yeah. terms of, of wrapping this up and and, uh, and closing out with some kind of, of uh, thoughts here, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you want to deal, on, deal with, Louis? No, I, I think this is it. I mean, we're going <laughs> to Munich this year with it, not with new products, but with a new sound. Yeah. Yeah. That room in Munich is going to be very special. Well, we have three rooms in Munich. Let's yeah. touch on yeah, this quickly. Yeah, yeah. One is going to be with the new Vivid loudspeaker. Vivid. What is it called? It's the Moya Again? M1. The M1, and only, which is... And, then, yeah. and, and uh, Moa Moa, will be re and it's going to be driven by a couple of new mono blocks yeah. uh, in yeah. a bi-amp mode. And so we're very your, excited with, with about... Your, yeah. your table, your yeah. arm, 
you know, perpetual table, discovery arm, and, we're and Kabbalah sauces in there as well. That's yeah, exactly. So the all 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 so these great, are real great brands and known quantities, yeah. and yeah. Uh, the second room is with the Gobel, as we do a we year do after year. year. We have a we have a base uh, with Oliver. Oliver is a great designer as well. And then we have uh, uh, we're going to be with the TLA, TLA and Gershman yeah. Acoustics yeah. in another room. Um, TLA haven't have worked on the phono so hard, and uh, we've we've always had a close uh, 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 family type of uh, relationship. Yeah. So we'll be supporting them in that role. Well, we're all so, TLA fans, that's well, for sure. Yeah, if you've yeah. watched the channel, you know that uh, Iris has been in the room and talked about stuff there. So. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much Thanks for, for the honor the time to you, come bro. up here and play with these toys. Because Thanks for taking the time. Oh, my honor, guys. Everybody, we hope we see you in Munich. Till next time. My sincerest thanks to Louis for the invitation and his gracious hospitality to make this remarkable pre-launch product experience possible, and to Bill Parrish for trekking north to join us. As the logical conflation of all he learned during the creation of Discovery, Perpetual brings so very much to the LP playback party, starting with the implementation of the very same motor towers and platters, and the application of a slight outward slant to the alignment of the O-rings near the top of each of its four suspension towers. Leveraging lessons learned with Discovery, it capitalizes on the advantages offered by the symmetrical central placement of the platters, rather than the more common shifting them ever so slightly to the left. The controller offers power and speed selection, the current charge status of each of the internal supercap banks, as well as the ability to dim or turn off the displays. In the end, though configured to mount only one tone arm, the Perpetual is just one inch wider than the Pro and five inches narrower than Discovery. With Perpetual, along with his choice to maximize the benefits realized with the use of fewer parts, his vision employed the fabrication of plinths made of phenolic layers above and below a central layer of aluminum. To realize the crucial assembly interrupts minimize contact, and apply differing torques across the entire assembly. Proven methods that so successfully allow for the disruption of vibration and resonance in the chassis. The newly redesigned power supply uses a huge transformer from TLA and affects a supercap bank for each platter, ensuring that Perpetual's controller provides greater isolation of the corrupting backward EMF from each motor. And like Sparta, there is an optional supercapacitor power supply, similar to that of Discovery with its simplified display. But without question, the highlight of my visit was the simply hypnotic performance I experienced at the mercy of the Discovery phono stage. This very functional and attractive phono preamplifier has two control knobs, one to the left and one to the right, and two push buttons in the lower right corner. The left knob controls the selection of either its two inputs and muting, while the right offers equalization adjustments. It is a five position switch offering in order a low frequency cut of minus two, then of minus one, to neutral, then a high frequency cut of minus one, and then of minus two. The two push buttons control the display on off and brightness, and trust me, after a blind demonstration of the effect, turning the illumination off makes for an even more compelling lesson. On its back are two selectors for the step-up transformers for each of its two inputs. Unengaged for moving magnet bypass, you are offered the selection of a step-up of either an applied 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 set of windings for use with moving coil cartridges. As Louis mentioned during our discussion, the preamplifier is powered by two massive, superbly regulated, completely separate power supplies in their own chassis, each with their own AC supply, switch, and connection umbilical. While it should be obvious that no one can have heard every phono stage under every condition and in every conceivable configuration, I would hope that it will be just as obvious that over my more than five decades of listening, and more than 35 years of writing about it, 
that I have had considerably more exposure to such products and circumstances than all but maybe a handful of other industry professionals. So when I tell you that in my experience, these products represent a once in a decade realization, you should have a clear understanding of just how significant I find their performance. In terms of their ability to resolve and present pitch definition, down into the subsonic strata, I had never even dared to imagine that what these machines routinely deliver could be possible. Their performance in this area alone establishes a new benchmark. Add to its ability to regenerate exceptionally faithful timbre, its effortlessness, naturalness, and highly nuanced expressiveness, especially of microdynamic shading and detail, and its utterly enchanting capability to render authentic tonality, engaging texture, and the physical corporality of human and instrumental voices, and you only begin to understand its prowess. After my dedicated and considerable time listening to Louis's new Kronos Perpetual Table and this world-class defining three-box discovery phono stage, it has become clear to me that this phono preamplifier not only establishes a conspicuous and indisputable new benchmark, but it will become the reference against which all others will be compared. Sadly, the rest of the world will have to wait until high-end Munich in early May in order to experience these simply astounding new products from the mind of Louis Desjardins. I hope to see you there. I want to watch your face as you hear what this system is capable of achieving. As always, thank you for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.